What's up everyone, this is Cloud15 and on this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to make a top-down airplane game. This is going to be a simple airplane game that goes upwards like uh, 1942 if that's what the game was called, I can't remember that well. So, create the ship width 32, height 32. And we shall make the ship simple as that use the line tool as it's much more easy to do and then just make it symmetrical symmetrical can't be made symmetrical cannot be made so I gotta do the crap like that Sucks. And then ta nope. There you go. And then we start here and go down. It doesn't even fit. I really didn't mess up on this. Alright, let me just remove that. Let's make a crappy little plane then. Nothing detailed. One, two, one, one, two, one. And then we have the wings break off right there. Not oh, crap. All right. This took two minutes, and I'm just gonna draw it crappily because I really don't care about drawing it right now. To draw. Two minutes for the crappiest looking plane ever. You draw your plane, remember to border it uh, by using the crop tool. Control Alt P is the hotkey for that crop tool. And then name it S Player. Now duplicate your little plane. Make a new one, 32 by 32. And in here we're just going to make a simple enemy. But this time we're going to make it face. We're going to start by drawing it you know upwards like before but then we're going to flip it down so something odd looking And then we're going to paint some random color so we know what, how different, and look at how that's, <laughs> that's messed up really bad. That's not even centered. That's the worst. <laughs> that's a beautiful plane. Anyways, control, sh alt, p. Yeah, control, alt, p. And now once you do that, Go to transform and do mirror flip, which is control alt M and flip vertically, not horizontally, depends on what you want to do. And let's write S enemy. Now go to the create event again, uh, not the create, create a new sprite and we're going to call it bullet, S bullet. Like the previous tutorial, we're going to make a <coughs> diamond shape 5x5. Five any color that you want I'm gonna make mine's white or actually make it gr dark gray mm, a little bit lighter than that like this one right here yeah that's good 
and then put the white right there and then start a control C on that little image and paste it and double click on that one and zoom in and like that and then zoom in on that one and go like that if you look at the we can't really tell the animation right now but that's like that we will be able to tell it in the game itself so center the bullet center the enemy and center your ship now after we're done with creating our little sprites because that's what we're going to use create an object we're going to create yours and we'll call it O player create the enemy of course O enemy and then a bullet O bullet and let's, let's create a room now put your player in there and we're done now go back to your object and create a new object call it O uh, o controller or O control and um, we're gonna set a timer this is what I use um, could be different for you as you can use a timeline I think that's what you can use timelines for but I've never used one before so I don't really mind about it so let's start by giving alarm one a call or alarm zero I mean alarm zero equals room speed times five so every five second or on the fifth second you will have alarm zero activate and right here we shall put instance create random room width and y is going to be negative 16 object o enemy alright let me explain as to what this does this creates an enemy unit at random room width which is random x coordinates could be any any spot right here and at negative 16 y so positive 16 would be around right here and negative 16 is back here so it's gonna create a unit uh, enemy unit around back here which in turn then he can w go forward towards us so now that we have that done let's add the controller to the room never forget about adding those objects as well I forgot to give the uh, unit <laughs> movement so let's go back to the controller go back to alarm zero we're gonna reset we're gonna make uh, this into a variable so enemy equals and then with enemy we're gonna put direction equals 270 because that's what we want it to face down and speed is going to equal 5 and then we put alarm 0 we're gonna reset the alarm every room speed multiplied by 3 so every 3 seconds so if we test it out it does not create an enemy oh there he is now the enemies are not dying after they go off to the room because of this we will end up creating massive lag down the road if we have much enemies so we want to put on the enemy open up your enemy uh, code 
go to add event and then go to other outside room and destroy the instance so we're going to type instance destroy that way they die and clear up our game now on old player <coughs> double click on old player go to add event go to step and we're going to write what we did basically on the previous game left and right up and down though so if keyboard check vk left if x is over uh, 32 if x is over 32 then x minus equals 32 divided by all right then let's put 4 like before cuz i really don't want to do math copy and paste four times we're going to do right here under 640 608 i think it's 608 plus equals 4 vk up on the third one for upwards and then we're going to change y if y is over and we don't want the character to be able to go all the way up or do we no not all the way up we want to limit him from space so we're going to put if y is over it's the corner the room size is 640 by 480 so if he's over 250 then y minus 4 and down is this one if y is under 480 minus 32 I can't do the math so 460 is going to do x is changed to y plus 4 plus equals 4 so let's test the program out and see if it's done right up down left and right down he limits him there which is actually good left limits there limits there and so you have that much space which is good enough space alright now that we have that done let's create a bullet if keyboard check VK space then we can do bullet equals instance create X and Y Oh, bullet and then with bullet we want to we want to change the color of the bullet of course because it's the player's bullet so let's do image blend equals C yellow C yellow stands for color yellow there are many other colors if you just write C underscore you can find them all So C yellow is going to do for right now because that's what we wanted to color. And um, we also want to give it a speed to go upwards. So direction is going to equal 90. And speed is going to be 6. So let's test it out. Let's change the background color in our room to black so we can actually see a little bit better or a darker yeah that one's better a darker one yeah. the books look like crap anyways so we got that done 
but we want to limit our bullet like before so let's create a variable can shoot can shoot equals one let's go to alarm zero can shoot equals one back to step go to the space bar if can shoot equals one do that can shoot equals zero and alarm zero is equal to room speed multiplied by one divided by three let's make it a fast yeah that's fast that's good enough Oops. Um, so that's good. Now we want to add some ob another object. Let's create another object and let's see what they have here. Board game, space, icon button. Nothing here is any good. So let's make our own platforms. Um, our size is going to be 100 by 100. Oops. And uh, press the check mark, copy this canvas and paste it four times because we're going to make four different canvases. This is where the art goes. Some quick things. Um, select your pencil tool and select a big size. Let's see how big that's big enough. Yeah, that's big enough. And I want you guys to go like this. Do a squiggly. A squiggly. Let me. All right. So basically, we have our little. Uh, this is an island, by the way. Now we want to change the opacity a little bit lighter. Blend, and use the right click because that's a lighter color. You can right click. So. You, I double right clicked. Just hold down the right click button. God, that looks like crap. <laughs> How do you like my crappy island? I like it a lot. It looks more like a freaking tree. Anyways, that's our first island. Mm, let's draw uh, a... <laughs> wow, you can't really draw anything on this. <laughs> <laughs> um oh crap let's get the pencil make it small draw a little house don't make it too good looking see this is a masterpiece right here in the works it looks like a factory yeah look at that factory why does it look 3d my eyes are hurting I don't like it anymore you know what now let's just make islands I don't want to work that much so let's just make <laughs> islands this one right here this one right here and that one right there this oh god it's replaced I forgot Go to blend. Remember to have blend open. And then set opacity back up. And we're going to do some more little islands. It looks like a really scary happy face. And then some other thing. This time I didn't even. 
I'm not even going to bother with the uh, opacity on that one. So there's our four islands. All right. Now go to rename it to S Islands. And these are just going to be, you know, random little objects that appear in the map. So, oh, Icelands, Eastlands. And don't click on your islands. Go to add event. Go to create and we are going to give it a random value of four. No, let's go. Mm, sprite sp image speed actually first. Image speed is equal to zero. That way we don't see all the uh, islands appear. Then image index is equal to random sprite index. And then go back to the code and uh, write direction equals 270 and speed is equal to how fast does the ship move by 4? So let's put it by 4 or 5. Yeah, 5. Now it's going to be moving down, so we want it to start up above. I didn't even add it to this freaking game. I'm an idiot. Uh, really quick, go to add event, then other, then outside room, and right here put H. Uh, it's not H. It's move snap. Yeah, move snap. No, that's not right. Oh well, I can't remember what what the uh, code was for that one. So let's just go to the move tab and put this one down, which is wrap screen, and then select in both directions. And now we're gonna put multiple objects of islands. Let's put one, two, three, four, five, six, five. All right. <clears throat> now once they are outside rooms, okay, that's cool. So as you can see, we have different faces, you know, different islands selected, which is what we wanted. And the plane, and now the enemy, oh god, that's not good. Look at that. The plane goes under the islands. They're clouds now. So, what we're going to do is change, first of all, change the background to a dark blue. Make it look like water. With these crap islands near it. And then we're going to double click on all islands and set the depth to negative 3. And try it again and see if we can get our ship under it. Alright, then it's not negative 3 what we want. We want positive 3. And now we should be above. Yep. Any value here can be anything you want. You can even have it to a 9999. Basically, these are like layers in Photoshop. If you know what I mean, then you'll understand what it is. If depth goes if you're positive in depth that means you're under everything that's basically on the zero mark so three is under the player and negative three would be above the player so that would be used for clouds or something um, now what we're gonna do is after we do the islands outside room move wrap that's what it's called delete that There we go. I'm going to put 0, 1, and the margin would be how big it, how big the island is. So once it's out of the screen, it was 100 by 100 if I remember correctly, so I'll do a 80. And then we're going to put um, x is equal to random room width. So if we were to test the program out right now, what it would do is it would teleport the island back on top of the screen, and it uh, whenever it goes back on top, it's going to have a different x value, which means it's going to be anywhere on top. So now we have different islands, but it's the same occurring island, but we want different islands. So let's go back to that, and we're going to Actually, let's just go to the create event and copy the code and paste it in there. So 
So now we have that one. Now we have that one. Now we have that one. So it actually looks now like we're moving ahead. Um, now let's let's be done with the uh, islands. I don't want to mess with islands n that much. The enemies is what we want to play with. 25 minutes. So double click on your enemy. Outside room, he gets destroyed. And let's create the alarm to actually start the enemies a lot faster. By 1 divided by 5. Did I delete the instance of object? I didn't. You know what? Just put alarm 1. That way they just instantly spawn. Well, apparently they're spawning way too outside the uh, room itself <laughs> to uh, do anything because out they're outside the room so they die. So let's just put 10 there. That's probably what it is anyways. Yep, that's what it was. And boop, we don't do anything because we have no life. Now, before we do anything else, I want to make an a HUD uh, GUI, basically. And if you guys remember correctly, our our screen size is 640 by 480. It's always that's the default size. So it's gonna put we're gonna put the width is gonna be 640, and then our height is gonna be 20. Nah, not 20. Too little. Uh, 100. Eh. eh. It's all right. So, anyways, this is gonna be a pain in the butt. These two are gonna be my colors. Like that and like that. So let's try and get them. Let's see if I can even click and drag here. I hate this so much. Click and drag. You know, it, I just might as well just do my own dang HUD using the draw events. So, anyways, let's just call this O HUD. This is making a simple HUD screen. Um, and we can put this in the center. Remember that your height is 100. So if we want to draw something like text all the way over here, we want to do something like x is going to equal 30, and y is going to equal negative 25 to, to draw a score or something. So anyways, let's go to objects. Let's create a OHUD and call it OHUD. And something you guys should know is that whenever you're using draw events on an object, for example, if we if we start the pro the game, we're gonna be able to see our HUD. But if we were to add a draw event to our object, let's just put something in there so it stays. It's going to disappear. The reason for that being is because it's try it's redrawing the object, but you're not telling it to redraw the HUD itself. So let's go to code and we're going to do draw sprite. And sprite's going to be. I think it was sprite index. Zero because it's the first image. X and Y because that's where we want the coordinates to be. Um, so replace your little HUD right there you may not want your character to go too low so 368 352 352 so go back to your player and go to step go to the down key and 352 I think it was I can't remember that well now 
let's try the program out again yep 352 so now we have that much range but we're gonna have to make it to where the HUD is above the enemy so now that he dis disappears so HUD is gonna be negative one yep there you go and now we want to make the HUD draw some scores for us so what we're gonna do is um draw text and like I said um, 32 uh, negative 25 or actually that's gonna be cor incorrect X minus or X minus if it's 352 or 350 to see X minus 100 or 200 or actually 300 X minus 300 and Y minus 25. We're gonna we're gonna write score there. And above that draw text, I want to do draw set color to C yellow. And as you can see, we drew our score there. We can actually raise that up a little bit more. So let's just do that really quick. Uh, 35 probably. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks nice. Um, and now let's create some variables on your player itself, which actually isn't viable. If you if you could create variables on a separate object, which you can, it would be actually a lot better. So let's actually do that instead, because then we can have this object be persistent and it'll have all your scores and stuff on every room that you go so this object is going to be called o player var and then we're going to go to add event create and we're going to put score scores equals zero lives equal three health HP actually equals a hundred alright now we're done with that so scores scores HP and lives let's save this really quick tutorial to ship so we want to with all HUD we want to call the score itself so after the score text or the score quotation you want to put plus string and then we're going to call the o player var o underscore player var dot scores and then an ending parentheses and we're done with that but let's add some more strings the last one's going to be our health so let's just Oops, let's do it like that and put health. Lives. And if we were to start the game right now, we'd have all these te all these little letters all together because we're having we're we have them in the same location. So let's lower this location by like fifteen, so that'll be twenty. And this one by 15, so that'll be 5. They should be separated. Unknown variable scores. O player var. Scores is there. Oh, wait. Haha. <laughs> I'm silly. Reason why it's giving us that or even error even though we do have player var is because we don't have it in the screen itself so make sure to add it to the screen all right score zero lives three and health is blank and our character is still down there
how do I move that like that? It's fairly easy to do. What you do is hold down control and then you can select your objects that you have currently in space. Um, now we want to what were we doing? Oh yeah, HUD. Right now we want to draw the health. So what we're going to do is make a new line. We're going to do draw a rectangle. So X is minus 300 for that. And health is probably going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's do minus 275. X minus 275. And the first Y is going to be. The first Y is going to be negative 5, as it says. Actually, negative. Yeah, 5. Negative 5, negative 10. Y negative 10. Then X2 is going to be the length. And we'll do X plus O player. O underscore player var dot health or HP as it was then Y the second is gonna be a little bit more down to the ground so it's gonna be Y minus zero zero because we don't want it as an outline you can just leave the second Y as is oh god that's humongous that's what she said let's uh make it a little bit more smaller down this Y right here it's gonna be a 5 and then this Y right here is gonna be a plus we're going up plus 5 Minus 3 and plus 3. And then the x is going to be 250. Alright, so it's separated away from that. Let's just drop it down a little bit more. So let's put y, leave it as, leave it as y. So that way it's on the plane itself. And then plus 6. Let's see where that gives us the health bar. That's a pretty big health bar, actually. How much health do I have? Oh, it's 100, that's right. So, I want to make an explosion every time I get hit by a character or enemy. So, collision with an enemy. We create a new enemy. That way, it's not too easy for you. Let's just create uh, random room width minus ten. Yeah, minus ten, and then O oh, enemy, and we're gonna play the explosion or is it that one right there with other explosion size of a small and the color is going to be purple or whatever to match him at a relative dis uh, at a relative location and let's do none of that smoke no ellipse no ring no yeah maybe ring a little explosion. Now what we can do is combine them like explosion, small, and ring, medium. Make it a little lighter color. Let's see what that looks like. Wow. It sucks. Why? Because we didn't tell him to die. So, let's tell him to live. Instance destroy. 
Also, apparently they weren't spawning because if they were spawning, we'd have a lot of them. So let's put negative five. Um. Oh, no, I died. Boo hoo. With other is what we have to put there. <laughs> with other and now we test it again <laughs> I see he was created I see he was created too but they're not given movement reason being is because we haven't specified it so let's go to the O controller go to the alarm and let's give them movement let's just copy this and paste it And now if we test it out, they should be created. Maxes you're going to ever have is two, I believe. So let's make it a little bit more funner. Let's give it a random value that it will create more every time the controller hits. So Random. Actually, first of all, floor. Random. Ten is equal to nine. Basically, saying. A random value of 10 is basically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because we always count 0. That's because we're putting floor there. If you put seal, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So floor, and we create 3 enemies. Let's see if that ever happens. Oh, there was another one there. Hmm. We could also just leave it as random if random ten equals nine. That's what it was supposed to be. I messed up that coding right there. If random 10, let's put if random 2 equals 1, <laughs> we should have a lot of enemies. Why does it lag whenever? Alright, I guess it's not working. What the heck? So I said 0, 1. If random one is equal to zero, let's see. Hmm, that's giving me crappy results. That's not even spawning anything. All right, screw it. I'll come back to this afterwards. Can't seem to remember how to work my uh, values. Alright, we're done with that for right now. The hide is done. Let's get hurt. We also need to lower down your variable. So, what we do is we do O player minus equals oh wait no player not o player var dot hp minus equals zero point 
No, not zero point. Twenty, because we want to lose twenty health. We get hit by an enemy. So look at your HP bar and bloop. We lost twenty health. Bloop, bloop. All right, that's good. But let's go to the old player bar and let's go to step event and just to be sure, let's do some variables. Well, not variables. Let's just fix this code. If lives is over zero, above that, put if HP is equal to or, or under or equal to zero, then if lives is over zero, we want to reduce lives by one minus equals one HP will be set back up to 100 and right here we're going to put else we're going to put show message you died I really don't want to waste my time trying to get killed, so let's just raise that value up to 100. Died. 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 You died. Now, we didn't really specify <laughs> a freaking death. It's just gonna it's gonna keep on doing that. So what we wanna do if you get stuck on that, just hold your hold down your escape button and you should be alright. It'll exit out the game. So once we're done with that, um go back to your old player actually the old player var and put game reset. Or was it re game game restart. <clears throat> All right, so we got that working. Let's also do something here that reduces your score by somewhat points. Reduce your HP by 20. O player if O player var dot scores is over 20. We're going to reduce the old player of our dot score. Minus equals 20. O player of our dot score is. Minus, yeah, there you go. Now we don't have score, so let me. Uh, they make it to where if it hits him. If collision is with. Oh, enemy. Oh, player dot. Oh, oh, player var. Sorry. Dot scores plus equals 30. No, 10. Makes it harder for you. And also. with other HP minus equals one. Let's give the uh, enemy health. So go to the create event and let's put HP equals three. Then go to the step event and put if HP is equal to or under or equal to zero instance destroy and then go back to your old player copy these two explosion things and then put them right there you can also click and drag 
things on top of each other just so you know um so let's test it out really quick oh, 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 oh. what did I put here if HP is under or equal to zero HP is equal to three. Oh, I see why Hmm. We're just gonna have to uh, <laughs> leave it without the uh, graphics. One, two. Oh, I guess. Oh. Now the reason why the bullets aren't being destroyed is because we haven't told it to get destroyed, but it works in the same manner as what we wanted to do for these scores to show up. Three shots and they do die, so that's good. Let's also those two codes that we uh, put uh, on the player that I wanted to add on the step event. Since we can't put it in the step event, you know how we put instance to destroy on the character. We can go to add event, instance or destroy, and then paste them there. That way, when he dies, it'll be created. All right, that works. Now in here, I want you guys to not in, not in step. I mean in the bullet. If yeah, in the bullet, go and put instance destroy. That way, you destroy the bullet that just hit him. Oh. Eh. Now why are they dying out there? I know why. Care to guess why people? Because we're killing them when they reach the end of the room. So in order to fix that, let's not kill them. Let's just teleport them back up to this guy. Or actually, better yet, let's let's leave them how they are. But so go to the enemy, go to destroy, and then go to oh, drag and drop. Right click on drag and drop, and go to variable. And <laughs> God, I hate drag and drop. Oh, player var value is three, or is not equal to is larger than zero. or actually is equal to zero or better yet it's smaller than one just in case if you get an extra shot so now they shouldn't explode whenever they reach the end correct they do not explode alright we're done with that um, 15 minutes on this video. Oh god. Most of it was whenever I was freaking contemplating on the dang enemy. Let's see. Let's add. Let's. Let's just make the enemy shoot a bullet. So duplicate the bullet down there. Make it called O A E O E bullet. And delete that event right there. I'd actually change it to collision with O player and we'll do nothing to the scores. Instance destroy because we want to destroy the instance. And with other Nope. We're just gonna go and put O player var dot HP minus equals their forty. So basically that's going to remove our lives by that much and then we're going to really quick have a step of have an alarm in the create event put alarm 0 equals 
room speed multiplied by one divided by two. The reason why I use room speed a lot is because is because if you actually learn how to use room speed, um, and you have this upcoming game that you make and you increase the speed to sixty or ninety, room speed isn't room speed is gonna keep it actually every second. But if you just put like a uh, half a second, which is uh, if we were to have 30 here, half a second would be 15. And you put 15 on this game, but then later on down the road you put 60. That half a second is going to become a quarter of a minute, or a quarter of a second. I mean, so let's put 30 again. What were we doing? Oh yeah, alarm zero. And then here we're gonna we're gonna do bullet equals instance create x y o e bullet with bullet. Now the thing is with this we want the bullet to actually go to the player. So since we know that the enemy isn't going to be always in front of us, we, we're definitely going to make it just travel towards the player. So direction equals point direction x, y. Then we're going to put o player dot x and o player dot y. And then speed is going to be 6. If we were to go, in, oh, really quick, go back to the create event copy the alarm, go back to the alarm, and paste the alarm thing right there. So that way it resets itself. If we were to test the program out, he'd shoot towards the player. Now just, oh crap, oh no, oh no. Down to... So we only have one character. Why isn't the other one spawning? As you can tell, it's going to be a pain in the butt, especially if they have that fast of bullet. Let's just reduce the speed really quick to three. And that should be it for that character. Let's make one more ship, and we're going to make him a bit tougher. Make him a look like a blimp, so... 32 is fine. Let's put 64. And he's going to be the size of a blimp. Start right here. Go like that. I don't really care about drawing him. He's already drawn, so let's just leave him as is. Center him, of course. And duplicate. And then just make a new image 32 by 32. Oops. And in here, actually not 32 by 32, that's going to be too hard. 15 by 15. In here, we're going to make a sphere. Not a square, a sphere. I don't like that. Stop it. All right. That's good. Now what we want to do is make it so people can have seizures. If you have seizures, don't watch. Go to this corner to this corner. And then this corner is going to be changed to white. All right, you can see it blinking like that, right? Center that as well. Cause one S flash, and then the blimp. Call it S blimp. Let's add them both to the object section. S blimp, O blimp. We're gonna give him one life because since he is a blimp, blimps tend to. You can destroy that if you shot at it, I believe. Flash. So, collision with 
a bullet instance destroy or actually better uh, Actually, better to just duplicate this and set it to collision with blimp. Then delete the life, and you're done. Actually, you're not done. Type with other instance destroy. That way, you destroy your bullet and your blimp, or the blimp itself. And then we're gonna write. Uh, we're gonna draw the explosion, which is gonna be. Ellipse, large, blue, above objects, relative. And do another one, firework, darker blue. Alright, now we're done with that. Delete this event. And under the step event, we're going to write if instance. Let's see. <laughs> Bullet equals nah. Flash equals instance create. Ah, oh, crap. Stop it. Create X and Y and O flash. Now, if instance number if instance number flash, let's see if that works, is under thirty. We're gonna create that. With flash, sorry, I'm back. Um, my mom wanted something. So, what were we? If instance number flash is under thirty, then flash is equal to instance create. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. Um, with flash, we're gonna put direction is going to equal. Let's see, direction is going to equal, I don't want it to go too far, so, forty-five plus random, forty-five is ninety, this calls for the work of a calculator. Because I'm bad at math. 45 plus 45 is 90. Then 135. Then one, 135 is what I want. Forty-five plus random. Actually, plus random 90 is actually what I want. And that way we have a range. If you look at my mouse, we have a range like that. And then speed is going to equal three. All right, let's test it out. Let's hope it works and not get an error. Most likely we're going to get an error saying that flash does not exist. Flash does not exist. You suck. So let's set flash to zero. Oops. Go to the blimp, go to create event and put flash to zero. Let's see if it works now. Ooh. Oh, I'm getting shot at. I didn't even notice. Alright. It works. Actually, let's... Let me see that again. How many instances do we have? It's going to create instances because we're not destroying it. So, outside room, instance destroy. Remember that, guys? Instance destroy. <coughs> Sorry it's taking so long for this simple tutorial. 
can create this I can create this game in like freaking ten minutes. Alright, our instances are staying at thirty. So that means it's actually staying with its variable, which is actually pretty good. Let's make it move downwards and see if it's actually staying with its variable. So direction is equal to two seventy, speed is equal to five four. Four. Four is good. Same speed as the plane that we have. Ah, shoot. Ah. Alright. It definitely did not keep to its variable, but you know what? Screw it. Let him create what he wants. Destroy this right here. Right here. Let's keep it at that. Um, it was definitely following the rules as to this direction value and maybe not three. Let's put two. Now flash. Don't click on flash. And now we're going to go to create event. We're going to set up a alarm. Alarm zero is equal to room speed multiplied by one divided by three and we're going to go to your alarm zero and put direction equals direction minus 180 actually not minus 180 direction equals di minus direction If that's correct, that means it's going to turn the bullets. Nope. Whoa. Direction equals direction minus 180. Let's see if that works. If we do that, then wouldn't it come forward? Yeah, whoa. Actually, that is what I wanted. But not so soon, though. So put that right there like that, and then put this one to actually leave it as one second. That would actually make it better. Uh huh. That looks pretty neat. Go to alarm zero, then set that to one second, and see how that looks. Of course, they're going to die after some time. We're going to make them die. It's a ripple effect. Woo. Look at that. Well, let's make them die then. Actually, let's, let's increase their speed. Speed equal plus equals 2. That way they get farther and farther. And let's go to the step event. And let's put image alpha minus equals 0 0.05. And then we'll put that basically means it's going to become more transparent, more and more transparent. And then we're going to put if image alpha is under or equal to 0, oops, we are going to do destroy it. So instance destroy. Hmm, they're being destroyed too fast. So let's do that as 0 0.01. And that looks alright. Let's try 0 0.0. 0 0.05. That just makes you really want to stay away from those <laughs> those guys. Um, so yeah, let's just leave it as that. And then we... Um, let's go to the blimp. If it's outside room, we want to definitely destroy it. So, outside room. Like the old player. And 
I think yeah. And then or enemy, I mean. And then if we do instance destroy. Actually, we don't want to destroy this guy. If he gets to the end, let's make it harder for you to um be able to you might uh, let's make it to where you want to kill him fast. Because if you don't kill him, then he's going to be teleported back up to the top at a random value, which is going to be random room width and a y value of minus 10. y equals minus 10. Sorry. And now we're going to put as well instance create, and we're going to create another one. X uh, random value, which is random room width and then <coughs> minus 10 and then oh blimp so you really want to kill him as fast as possible let's see what he does stay away from his bullet still oh god that was a beautiful explosion explosion oh shoot Oh. Oh, hell no. Yeah, see, you want to kill them as fast as possible. Yeah, you'd be dead. So, let's limit them from, you know, spreading out. So, if instance number, basically saying if the number of Oblimp is under 4. So that means I no, actually put five. It's under five. I'm basically saying that the limit will be under five, which is gonna be four. Four ships. Four or five, let me see. That's one. That's two. That's four. That was five, because I just killed one. Or actually four. God, that really messes up with your... Oh, it's five, actually. Where the hell is my character? Oh, there he is. But let's go back to the flash, and let's change it to make it a lot more lighter. To mess up with your eyes. And then this one right here to a blacker. There we go. That's what I want. I want that effect. I want the effect. Whoa, look at that. That's trippy. We're actually not going to make them hurt you as they really mess up with your eyes and you can't kill them all at once. So that actually helps the game make it harder for you to see the bullets that are incoming towards you. We need to also add the variable for which whenever you kill the guy we want to add 30 to your points. Then go to your player and let's create the variable, no not player, actually the player var and let's create your death thing. We're gonna boot, oops high score show the number which is going to be o player var dot o player var dot scores yep that's it scores i think that's it for this tutorial actually no it's not hold on if for example you actually do kill the the flash the blimp guy and yet you want him to appear again let's make it to where he appears every five minutes alarm two is equal to room speed multiplied by one 
multiplied by 20. So that's 20 seconds. So it's going to check every time, every 20 seconds, hopefully, if that's the one. Yeah, let's put that to 1. Then change that to alarm 1. Ah, oh, crap. Change alarm... Wait, what the hell? Change alarm 1 to alarm... Uh, to create, and then change alarm 2, if you did that, to alarm 1. If you already have alarm 1, leave it, as, leave it so... Then go to alarm zero, control C, and then paste that into alarm one. What we're gonna do here is gonna check if alarm one twenty. We're gonna change the alarm to one, then set the room speed to twenty, and then we're going to make it check if there's already a blimp out. If there is, we're not gonna do anything. If instance number o blimp is over zero do nothing else instance create now this is going to be a trippy thing hold on let's uh let's uh shoot 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 all right, cool. So 20 seconds into the game, there should be another one created. Come on, blimp. Come on, blimp. Alright, blimp isn't being created. Let's see. One. Let's go to alarm one. Maybe he is being created. Actually, if we just put equals here, equals zero, let's move this up. All right, so if O blimp, if instance number O blimp equals zero, let's create that. Oh, O oh, enemy, hooder, O blimp. The reason we're not specifying speed instructions or direction is because I believe we already did that on this. Yeah, direction and speed. That was another reason why the blimp wasn't appearing. There we go. He's going to mess up with your eyes. So let's make it even more trippier, more harder for you to pay attention to the level. Just so you guys know, the creation of these bullets, as well as you see how he's creating all those bullets and stuff, even though they're being destroyed by time, by making them invisible, and by going outside of the room, if you have a lot of things later on in the game, I mean a lot of things, then you can have problems due to lag on old computers. Newer computers can handle lots of uh, instances at once. So let's go to the flash and set a random variable really quick. Image blend equals make color RGB which is going to be red, green, and blue and we're going to put random 255 comma and we're going to copy that random 255 or you can write it two, two more times and then end it like that basically what we're saying now is that the, the flash is going to change colors every time it's created it's different colors, it's going to have its own color that's trippy just imagine having a lot of people. Oh man, uh, that'll give me a headache. <laughs> I still like it though, it's pretty nice. 
anyways um that'll be it for this tutorial um basically we covered making a simple plane that goes upward type game you have life you have score you have a high score you have health um the enemies have life well one enemy has life and that's about it for this tutorial in the next one I shall teach you guys particle effects how to create them and how to put them on objects making them follow either the mouse or the an object that you're trying to like a jet for example so yeah that's it for this tutorial see you guys peace